One of the best ways to improve as an investor is to read great investing books. I've personally read hundreds of investing books over the last two decades, and they have helped me tremendously to improve my investing skills. Now, if you're a fan of my channel, the odds are pretty good that you've read many of these classic investing books yourself, such as The Intelligent Investor, The Little Book of Common Sense Investing, Rule Breakers and Rule Makers, The Psychology of Money, etc. But rather than talk about those well-known books, in this video, I wanted to share six hidden gem investing books that that I personally have loved to read and share with everybody, but they don't get as much coverage as some of those more popular books. My name is Brian Feraldi. Thanks to Quarter for sponsoring this video. If you're new here, this channel was created to help the world invest better. If that interests you, subscribe to follow along. And with that, here are six investing books that I think don't get enough of. Number one is Warren Buffett and the Interpretation of Financial Statements by Mary Buffett. So this book was written by Mary Buffett, who used to be married to one of Warren Buffett's sons. They have since separated, but when Mary was part of the family, she got a rare first-hand education on how Warren Buffett thinks and invests. Mary has since used that knowledge to write several books about Warren Buffett's investing strategy, but this one is one of my absolute favorites. This book not only provides a useful introduction that talks about how Warren Buffett picks stocks and the importance of finding stocks with moats, but it also goes over all three of the financial statements line by line and talks about how Warren Buffett thinks of each number. The last part of the book also provides some very basic information on how to value companies as well. So this book provides a fantastic overview of the basics of accounting and tells you how useful each number is. So this is a book that I personally reference all the time and highly recommend. Book number two is called 100 Baggers by Christopher Mayer. This book is all about 100 baggers, which are stocks that go up 100 times in value. In this book, Christopher gathered a comprehensive database of companies that returned at least 100x in value during their life as a public company, which is a life-changing return. All you need is one or two of these stocks in your portfolio to do extremely well as an investor. Now, the book does talk about many of the most well-known 100 baggers, such as Berkshire Hathaway, Walmart, and Altria Group, but it also covers some more obscure 100 baggers, such as Kansas City Southern, Forest Labs, and even New Market Corporation. Now, the book points out that there's no magic formula for finding 100 baggers, but the book does provide an overview of some of the essential principles that investors can use to find potential 100 baggers today. Uh, some of those principles are a low market cap, a high sales growth, stock buybacks, an economic moat, and an owner-operator CEO. If you're new to investing and you don't know what each of those means, buy the book and give it a read. Book number three that I love is Investing for Growth by Terry Smith. So this book is a compilation of essays and letter that Terry Smith wrote between 2010 and 2020 to his fund's investors. If you're unfamiliar with Terry Smith, he's kind of like the modern day Peter Lynch, but he's from England. In his book, Smith makes the case for buying the best companies in the world and holding them voraciously. I really like Terry Smith's investing style. He basically looks for high quality businesses that generate gobs of cash and know how to reinvest it in themselves to drive higher and higher rates of return for their shareholders. Now, Smith not only shares what traits the high quality companies that he own have in common and where to find them, but he also discovers how to uncover imposters, which are companies that are masquerading as great businesses, but they're really not. He also has some great other tips in there about how most companies actually destroy value with stock buybacks, how ETFs are actually more risky than most investors realize, and how ESG investors often end up with investments that are not really green or even ethical. Smith's wonderful investing philosophy is summed up so well in his seven word phrase, buy good companies, don't overpay, do nothing. So I think this is a great book that every aspiring investor should read. All right, that's three books down and there are three more to go. But before I get to that, I want to give a shout out to this video sponsor, which is Quarter. Quarter's mission is to make every action between companies and investors meaningful. Quarter does so by providing frictionless access to conference calls, investor presentations, transcripts, and earnings reports from markets all around the world, straight to your pocket for no cost. If you're interested in giving Quarter a try for free, simply visit the app store of your choice and search for Quarter. That's Q-U-E. 
A-R-T-R. -R. Thanks, Quarter, for sponsoring the video. Number four is The Emotionally Intelligent Investor by Ravi Mehta. Now, as you can see, this book has a really boring cover, but please don't let that fool you. The book is actually filled with practical information on how investors' emotions can cause them to make terrible decisions, and the book provides practical advice on how investors can combat that. The book talks a lot about the importance of self-awareness, some of the common weaknesses and biases that we all face as humans, and how investors can work to overcome these flaws in themselves and generate higher returns. Now, what I'm about to say might actually surprise you, but the book also talks about how technical analysis can be useful. Now, I've personally long been a skeptic on technical analysis and I do not use it personally, but Ravi argues that technical analysis can be useful for reading the current emotions of the markets and how investors currently feel about a stock. So I hadn't thought of technical analysis that way before, and I can see when viewed through that lens how it can have some merit. I'm still not gonna use technical analysis in my investing philosophy, but it did make me see that in a different light. And I love when books challenge commonly held assumptions that I have and make me think differently. Book number five is Only the Best Will Do by Peter Seilern. So Peter Seilern is the chairman and controlling shareholder of Seilern Investment Management. This is a fund that was found did more than 30 years ago and has about 1.5 billion in assets under management today. And as the title suggests, Silern's investing style is actually a lot like Terry Smith. So in this book, Silern evangelizes the idea of only putting your capital in the highest quality companies that you can find. He wants investors to find great companies that can reliably deliver steady returns and strong growth for many, many years and essentially saying ignore everything else in the market. This book is a great companion to Terry Smith's book and I just found it to be a wonderfully insightful read. All right, and book number six is The Little Book That Builds Wealth by Pat Dorsey. For those of you that are unfamiliar with Pat Dorsey, he was at Morningstar for many years, and this book does a fantastic job about how to find and identify businesses that have economic moats. Now, an economic moat is something we talk about on this channel all the time. It's a factor that allows a company to generate higher rates of return for longer periods of time than anyone can believe is is possible. So Dorsey talks about all the different types of moats, how to find them, and also what kind of fake moats are out there. Now, one great thing about Pat Dorsey is that he has since left Morningstar and runs a company called Dorsey Asset Management. That's a concentrated fund that invests pretty heavily in a select group of stocks. So Pat Dorsey is one of the fund managers that when a new 13F filing comes out, I always look through to see what stocks have entered his portfolio. Now, one other thing I did wanna note is these six books are truly excellent, but the number of investing books that are useful out there is truly monumental. I actually made a Google Sheet that I use to track every great investing book, investing resource, podcast, Reddit farm, et cetera, that I come across and basically use that to store all the great links that I find on the internet. If you're interested in getting a free copy of that Google Sheet, uh, I put a link in the description below. So just go on and click that. And since this is a video about books, I would, of course, be remiss for not mentioning my own book about investing, which comes out on April 5th, 2022. Well, I hope you enjoy those six recommendations. They have truly helped me a lot to become a better investor. Happy investing. Brian, out.